What font do I use for my thumbnails? What font? And uh, hey everyone, so this is a video where I'm answering your questions uh, and your concerns in the comment section. Some things you asked for Q and A. Some questions you just asked multiple times over, like what font do I use? That's the biggest one on the whole channel. Uh, stick around, we'll get to that. But first, let's start off with some of the general, more basic questions uh, from you guys. I have them on my phone here, so we're gonna be doing this very impromptu, very chilled, relaxed today, hopefully. That being said, the first question comes from a channel member, which is just one question. What's your approach to structuring and planning videos? Now, I did answer him in the comment. However, I come up with an idea, write it in my notes app on my phone, then set my camera up. Basically in the notes, I'll have some bullet points and just kind of abbreviate what I want to do and the thoughts I have about whatever that video might have been about. And then I just start filming and like let it roll. And as I work through the filming process, I kind of like articulate what the most important points are. And then I just keep those in, in the edit. And uh, that's been working for me for like the past six months of pretty consistent content on this channel. I used to write out everything word for word. And I'm not saying that's a bad method, but I am saying that that was not a method that seemed to work for me long term. So hope that answered you. We're gonna change the aperture. The next question comes from a subscriber, which is, hey Trent, which filmmaker was your biggest inspiration when growing up? or what film did you really admire? Okay, so we'll do this in two parts. First, favorite filmmaker, uh, inspiration if you would, would be Casey Neistat without a single doubt. That is the main reason, he, he's the main reason I started making videos and it's not because of him that I make them. Is this motion? Yeah, this is, it's okay, it's tracking. I wanna make sure that autofocus is on. Um, it's not because of him that I make videos now, but at 14, when I started making videos, his daily vlogs were like peak. And that was a big part of my life where I didn't know what I wanted to do and I didn't know who I was. And that was like something I found to be very interesting. And I tried it out and I was like hooked from the beginning. Um, not to mention his videos and his storytelling technique is phenomenal. So there's that. And then uh, which film inspires me? I don't really know. I'm not a huge like mainstream film guy. Like all the big movies that everyone out there probably watches or knows about, I, I probably haven't seen. I like a good story, but I try to spend more of my time making videos than watching things, but I probably should watch more to get more ideas if I'm honest. All right, so a third question from another one of you guys would be, do you have any tips for beginners? How can I improve in practice? Love your videos, they're so informative. Well, thank you for saying that, first off. And second of all, do I have any tips? Sure, I mean, the easiest, most obvious one, but the one I truly believe in is just continue to make more videos. I mean, make more. And when you think you've made a lot, make more. Because one, this is like a never ending field, right? Video is always going to evolve in the style and format that works now. It will not work in probably a year. And is it even working today? It might not. It might have worked yesterday and not today. So keep making more videos. On top of that, beginner tips, uh, plan and organize everything the best that you can, the way that works for you. For me, if I want to make a video with a story involved and I need footage, I already have had an organization structure in my folders um, to where I can find footage, you know, it doesn't matter how old, very easy because I've organized it. So plan ahead because you never know when you need something and don't delete footage because you never know when you'll need it. Okay, I hope that helps. Try to keep these brief. All right, so another question is how do I do that effect where I have like the edges blurry, but my face isn't? Um, and that, that's a chromatic aberration effect that I use for Motion Array. Again, if you guys wanna get Motion Array, I am sponsored with them. There'll be a link in the description, you can check that out. But that's like a drag and drop effect that I just like literally drag and drop onto my timeline, onto the adjustment layer above my footage. And then I just use the uh, retro lens preset, I think. And then I just change the radius to like just the edges and I, and I mask a little bit so it doesn't affect my face, but it gets the edges and kind of makes that like, you know, chromatic aberration effect. I made a video on how to do that if, if you don't want to do the motion or anything and you want to still kind of do it yourself. I will, I'll link it up here. You can check it out. All right, so uh, another question is who am I and why did I randomly just start posting videos? Good question. Thank you for asking. That's like a weird question to answer because who am I? I mean, I'm, I'm Trent, right? Like I know who I am, but like, who am I to you guys? I don't know. I'm, I'm a dude who has made videos on YouTube for like eight years now. And in those eight years, I've done a lot of different varieties of YouTube videos. Um, and I've never quite knew which ones I wanted to do. And then I started teaching people, you know, people would request to like see how something was done. And I'm like, oh, I know how to do that. I've been editing for eight years. I've got a lot of experience or knowledge up here, right? Or ideas. So I started making those videos. So I started posting them. You know, I posted a few, I posted like 10, 12 videos before uh, the one that most of you are probably here from, which is the Hoatian video, the first one. Then I realized, you know, okay, let me get serious on this. So let me help people out because I know that I needed this and it's easy for me to make content on things that I understand and already believe and know. So I just started making that content that I wish I had, like weirdly specific things that I, I came across in my journey. And uh, I just, make random videos on things that I think 
you guys might want to know. I'd love to make other videos that are more personal, but if you guys don't want to watch those, then I get that. You're here for tutorials. So hope that answers your question. All right. So a big question that a lot of you guys ask and a big question that I think a lot of the internet asks and, you know, future content creators, people who haven't started making videos yet or not is how can I start my journey as a content creator? I've made a few vlogs, but I'm camera shy and have an introverted personality. This is a big one. It's not that hard to answer, but it's a big question because I know that a lot of you don't know where to start. You feel like you have to have some type of prerequisite to start. And the thing is like, I started at 14. I, I went on Amazon with like the little bit of money I had and I bought a Canon uh, power shot. I'll put it on the screen here. I don't remember which one it was, but I started making videos and those videos are still on the internet somewhere. And um, I, I won't share them because I don't want them to be on the internet. But the point I'm making is I started making videos with zero experience, but all I did was make videos. There's no like one way to be a content creator or no one way to like make it work. I just started making videos because I wanted to. I didn't do it because a content creator was a cool thing to be. However, in regards to the vlogging part of that question, don't be a vlogger off the bat. It just won't work. And if it does work, you are like a one in a billion, which is awesome for your sake, but you need to provide value. You need to provide value to the audience. And if your vlogs can do that, you might have a chance, but more often than not, most of our vlogs that people have made, I've made them, have zero value to an audience member who doesn't know you, who doesn't actually care about what you have to say. So build that audience, that core audience. And then when you want to make a vlog about something personal, they might actually care enough to watch because they, they know you, they, they watch your videos. They like your videos. You guys interact in the comments. Like they might actually give you a chance. So don't start with vlogs, but just start making content. That's how you become a content creator. Just make shit. All right, so this comment's from a friend, congrats on 15K, huge W. Thank you, Rusty. How does one find a way to be unique in their own editing style? Um, I'm gonna answer this very quickly because again, I'm trying to get to some other questions, but being unique in your own editing style, again, this comes down to making a lot of content, making content continuously, never stopping to make content, but also taking a step back, looking at your content as a whole and figuring out what you do best, what you do worst, what you want to be through your content, and then taking those best parts of it and taking what you want to be and then actually doing that. It's not an easy thing to do. It takes a long time. It's took me about seven or eight years now to figure out my visual and, you know, aesthetic style, if you would. But in the beginning, you're going to copy people. It's just inevitable. You're going to copy people. Artists copy people all the time and that's fine. Um, just add something, you know, every time you make a video, add something unique to it, add something of your own. And eventually you'll get to where you figure out what you like and what you do best. And that's your style. I don't think there's a direct answer, but thanks for the question. Okay, we're doing two more questions, and this is a very asked question across the internet, across my channel, across other channels. Do I think DaVinci Resolve is better or worse than Premiere Pro, or does it hold up to each other? Um, I think that they are, and I've used both, I own both. I've been trying to learn DaVinci. I'm not nearly as proficient in it as I am in Premiere. So I'm partial to Premiere, but I think that DaVinci is insanely good. One, because there's a free version, which is insanely good for just being free. And then two, I know this to be true that the color grading capability in DaVinci is, is significantly better and more user friendly than Premiere Pro. That being said, the UI, the layout, the workspaces, you know, I'm not as big of a fan as I am in Premiere. I've also used Premiere for eight years now. And, and that being said, uh, I'm very partial. I'm very familiar with Premiere. I don't plan on leaving it permanently, um, but I am messing around with DaVinci a little bit, trying to add some spice to some of my videos, if you would. Um, and, and I think this is good to know more software. So we're in both of them, sure. Do I think that they're one's better than the other? No, I think they have both have their benefits. Premiere has a terrible crashing problem though. I will say that it is the worst. It's annoying. I do not respect that. Um, and the subscription model is terrible from Adobe. But outside of those, the actual software just on, a, on you know, an objective quality, it's a great software. They're both great softwares. And then, okay, I don't even need to look at my phone. The final question, I'll put all of them on the screen here, is what font do I use for my thumbnails? What font? And uh, I've told you all this in comments, I made a short about it uh, in the descriptions. I've added links to things. Nonetheless, we're gonna answer this again because I know that you guys, you know, just straight up love the font, want the font, want to use it. So here is my font and here is the color code, something I haven't given out of all my thumbnails, all my videos, everything else like that. You ready? The font is called Makala, Makala. And it's, you know, what is it? I don't know, it's a good serif font. I found it somewhere, I don't know. And then I ended up buying it because I started making videos with it. And uh, yeah, the color code's on the screen, FFD935. I know it like the back of my hand because I type it in every single day. Uh, that being said, those are the that's the font, that's the color. Don't steal my style, dog. 
<laughs> I don't care. Okay, it's a font. It doesn't really matter. You guys can do what you gotta do, right? I hope that these questions kind of gave you some more insight on some of the questions you had. We're almost at 17,000 subscribers, which is pretty wild because I've never had that many followers on anything. Lots of videos to come. I'm not gonna quit this thing anytime soon. I don't think I ever will. Like, but that being said, I wanna make more videos that are more real for me. I don't exactly know what those are gonna be yet, but if you guys have any ideas for videos that you'd like to see, please let me know. Leave a comment for more questions for the next one that we'll do one of these, you know, again. Uh, one video this week, by the way, because I've been out of town when this is posted. I've been out of town for a week. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy this. See you guys later.